Well, Mr. Wu is back, and he had a great time in Germany. So here are some pictures that he took while he was in Germany with the great company of Leica, and he'll explain to us his great experience and what a fun time he had with Leica, Germany. So I hope you like this video and enjoy it, okay? And then we'll talk about the cameras. Thanks. Hey, look who's back. Boy, we've been waiting a long time for Mr. Wu to come back from Germany. But before we get into the next camera, um, I'd like to have Mr. Wu kind of mention what was it really like to be at Leica uh, at Wetzlar, Germany and seeing some of his old friends and colleagues. So, uh, Mr. Wu, what was it like? Well, it's homecoming for me. And going back home to most Leica enthusiasts the, the able, able to visit the factory and its uh, related facility is like milking a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. So when I went back, of course everything is new. I was there in 2014 when they put the new factory, but then the other buildings were not ready. But to, this time around when I go there, all the surrounding buildings were ready and we call it the Leica campus because everything is just all around you. The main factory building, then you've got a building that makes the lights, uh, cine lenses, and then you've got the owner's uh, place where he, whenever the owner comes to Leica, he has his own uh, office right on top. Then we have a Leica cafe, we have a Leica hotel, you can stay there. In fact, in the hotel, the wallpaper in the room is all the drawing of the original Leica. If you walk through the corridor, are all the statements made by the great Leica photographers like Henry Cartier, Bresson and so on. So all of them have uh, something to say about photography. It's all written on the wall. And uh, every floor, every lobby, you can see the huge Leica pictures, the memorable pictures. So it was a nice place to go. And not just only the technical part, the production, but actually when you understand that Leica is more than just a company making cameras and to sell for money. Uh, I find that the Leica is a very human company. Even in the early days, uh, when the first owner, Ernst Lights, when he started the company, he started to introduce the eight hour work week. So he shortened the working hours. He provided housing for the staff. And uh, at one time during the war, where money was scarce and uh, it was like some uh, inflation and things like that, he printed vouchers to give to the staff. And he told the, the stores to allow them to exchange the voucher for food and for provision. So he did a lot of things for the welfare of the people. I saw in one of the historical books, uh, the wife of the owner personally gift wrapping the presents for their Christmas. So it was a very human company. And in my recent visit and a chat with the, the gentleman who took us through the factory, he said that it takes some time for the people to learn the new skill to make the camera and the different parts of the processes. And when they take time to train them, in the process, if they notice that someone took a little while to learn, they will be patient with him and take him through the steps. But if they finally find that he was actually a round hole in a square pack, they don't ask him to get out and find their own job. What they will do is they try to find out what other work in the company that he can fit in. So just because you can't do something well because you're not uh, don't have the dexterity or, or the aptitude for that, they will try to find something that you can do. So I find that this is a very human part of the company. So it's not just making camera with metal and glass, but actually this is a company that caters for the human. You feel at home with them. Well, that's uh, very interesting because I think a lot of people have a misconception of, of like, a, and there's a lot of rumors that are going around 
is because there's a, just a lack of knowledge on the, on the whole. But um, after you being there and seeing some of your old colleagues there at Leica and getting the straight story, now we know uh, what it's really like and their pursuit for perfection in their optical line. Wouldn't you say? Yep. Okay, great. All right, so uh, what I'll do is I'll send, uh, I'll insert some pictures of the, that, that Mr. Wu took on his trip to uh, the Leica Wetzler, Germany, and I'll insert those so you can take a look, see, okay? So, but now we're gonna have a little different beast here and, and it is a beast, <laughs> I must say. Um, you can see all the components. So today, what do we got here? Okay, today we do the Mamiya RB67 Pro S. It is a medium format 6x7 single lens reflex camera, somewhat like a Hasselblad, it's modular. Uh, this format, another company also have that is like the Pentax 67. So the 67 format is what they call an ideal format. With this uh, ratio of 6-7, you can make an 8-10 eight, eight, picture without cropping. So they call it the ideal format. So whilst the commercial advertising photographer would lean to get the Hasselblad, because if they do those days, if you want to pitch a job for an advertising contract, if you did not own the Hasselblad, you simply don't get the job. But the further down the rung, we have the wedding photographers. In the place where I live, 10 out of 10 photo studio who take wedding, they are using the Mamiya. Well, for a simple reason, it's a lower price point and it does its job and it's, uh, it's a good workhorse. So it's a modular camera. On the heart of it, you have the body. So you have lens. So after you uh, flip the mirror, cock it, and the lens is like the bridge lock mount. So you line up the red dot with red dot and you turn the collar. So now the lens is mated to the body. You have focusing screen. Now before the focusing screen, you see this little red line here. That will adjust the that will adjust the, the framing for the vertical and horizontal format. So we put a screen and then you need to put the revolving back. This is the revolving back. So let's see, we fit it on. Yeah, open the gate. Yeah. And we'll put it on. Yep. But the revolving back means that you can do this for vertical and horizontal. So let me take out the screen that you can see what happens. When you are in a vertical format, this is in horizontal format. You see the true red line comes out, so you frame within this bar. When it's a vertical format, this gets out of the way. And then you uh, follow the vertical line. Okay. Then the viewfinder, this is the waist level finder. You clip it on. Give it like stop lock so it flips up. And uh, let's put the film back, the film magazine. So you can put the film magazine. So now it's complete. Of course, this is a hood. This is the rear cap. This is the body and lens cap. These are the extra screens. So now you're ready. But uh, like all the cameras, if you don't take out the dark slide, you cannot click. So you take out the dark slide, then you can click. You wind and click. One stroke is to wind the film and set the shutter. Then you click from here. Then you change from vertical to horizontal. What the Mamiya did is they built in the bellow in the lens. So Without any attachment, you can focus close, go up to close-up. You don't need extra attachment to do the close-up. 
And since it has a shutter in the lens, leaf shutter or central shutter, we call it, the, the sync speed for the shutter is throughout the whole range, from one second to 400. This is a leaf shutter, right? Leaf shutter. And the flash sync, you've got two settings. One is uh, X and M. So today we are all using electronic flash, so we leave it at X. But uh, for those old days, we had a flash bulb, you put it to M. And to further help to reduce vibration, they also have this double cable release. So you can uh, hook one to the shutter and hook one to the lens and put it to mirror lock. So when you plunge this, the mirror will go up first. Then you further release, then you trip the shutter to reduce uh, vibration. So this camera is a bit bulky and heavy. It's not so uh, convenient to take it to the field, but it's still possible. The, is, this camera works best on a tripod. And uh, I, I've used this in my early days. I do art reproduction from it. Where I work, they, I got a friend who has an art gallery upstairs and he wanted to print catalogs for his exhibition. So I used this to copy all his artwork and make a art reproduction. So it was a good camera. So you got six by six. And for studio, you don't need such a huge negative for ID picture. So you can use a bag which is smaller, is 645. So you get a 15 shot out instead of 10 shots. So that one for ID picture. So that's it, Mamiya. So they got lenses from wide angle, uh, standard, portrait, tele. Did they have a Polaroid bag? Oh yes, they have a Polaroid bag. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Wu, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm sure uh, this has been uh, a hot one in the request section. So we'll see you again, huh? Yeah. The next one. Yep. Okay, welcome back. Welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye.